Hello, my name is Dr Stuart Hutchinson. I'm a consultant geriatrician here at Royal Wolverhampton's NHS Trust and I mostly work out in, in the community. And this talk is about how to verify someone dead. And I'm using the term verify or confirm if you want because that's what you're doing. You're not certifying. That's something totally different that I'll come to later. So if you're about to verify someone dead, just remember you've probably seen dead people before and you knew they were dead. And if you've got that bit right, then you've got nothing to, nothing to worry about. So what you're doing is you're pronouncing life extinct. You're not certifying. Uh, although in law, anyone can verify a death, they don't have to be a doctor. They don't actually have to have registration of, of any kind at the moment as of April 2020. But you are certifying that someone is dead, as a, you are verifying, sorry, that someone is dead as, as opposed to anything else, unconscious, sleeping, hypoglycemic, or whatever other causes of reduced consciousness you, you may have. The other thing that you are doing is you are legally establishing the time of death. In other words, you're not dead until someone actually legally says that you're, that, that you're dead. And what the time that you arrive will be the time that's recorded on, on the documentation, not the time that the people who were with them say that, they, that, that, that the person took their, their last breath. Don't worry if there's a bit of a delay. Standards allow for up to four hours in, in any circumstances, uh, but it should be within four hours within the community. If you work in a hospital setting, it will probably be quicker. What do you need to um, establish death? Well, you need a valid DN do not attempt resuscitation order. Those, those vary from place to place, but it should be in, in accordance with uh, policy where, where, you, where you work. It should be an expected death. Now, people talk a lot about expected death and unexpected death. In essence, if someone has a do not resuscitate form, then that death will probably be expected at some point in the reasonably near future. Not always, but, ne but nearly always. So people get very, very worried that they haven't been seen by a doctor within 14 days. Although as of April 2020, during the coronavirus pandemic, it can be, tw it can be 28 days. But if the answer to the question, would you be surprised if this person had died, is no, then it's an expected death. Occasionally, people will have been fine at one point, and then maybe the staff have gone round at three in the morning and found them de de dead in bed. Although that would be unexpected at that particular moment, in the context of that person's life and function, it would be, it would be expected. There may be a, a form that needs to have been filled in that a GP has agreed that, that someone else, apart from a doctor, can, can verify. That is optional in Wolverhampton at the moment. Some places have them. I think most, most places won't. The, pe the person you are verifying has to be over the age of 18. Um, and there has to be no obvious referral to the coroner or no suspicious circumstances at the time, at the time uh, of death as you come across it. So if the person is lying in bed, even if they've not been seen by a, a doctor or a GP for 20, 28 days, that's absolutely fine. If you find a, a pillow that's been pressed firmly over their head, then obviously that's suspicious circumstances and you'd want to call the police. Likewise, if it was, say, an expected death in someone who had advanced cancer, but they had been found fallen at the bottom of the stairs, then, apart from saying that they're obviously dead, you would call the police and you would not uh, allow the body to be moved until, the, until that had happened. But actually, you would hope that these are a rarity, and if it happened more than once in your career, I think you'd be, you'd be pretty unlucky. So, I will just talk a little bit about referrals to the coroner. Referrals to the coroner is, is a complex area, but for the, the vast, vast majority of people, it is for the person doing the certification, it's for the doctor doing the certification afterwards. Um, and that can apply to... Uh, Suspicious death, even, even if it's expected. Do not worry about other causes of, of referrals. As an example, if you had someone with asbestosis or a mesothelioma that they'd acquired at work, but they'd been palliated, everything else was in place and the death was expected, then that would be fine to go ahead and verify, 
but the doctor doing the certification would, would certainly refer it to the coroner for further action later. And that is absolutely as, as it should be. So moving on to the practicalities of how to verify a death, you're looking for the following things on, uh, on uh, the person. You're looking for no pulse, you're looking for no heart sounds, no breath sounds, no respiratory effort and fixed dilated pupils. For all of those apart from the pupils, you should be looking at doing them from a minute each. But before you do anything, you should watch the body for five minutes. Now that doesn't have to be five minutes of staring at them, because obviously if the family are in the room and you sit in silence for five minutes, that's going to be pretty awkward. But you can do your documentation, you can do the last offices, you can prepare your equipment, but you can be watching the body at the same time. If by any chance you've arrived early and the, and, uh, the person takes one last final breath, then restart. Again, if a DNA CPR is in place and it's an expected death, that's fine. Sometimes, sometimes these things happen, although they are really alarming and also for the family and, and you can reassure them at this point. So, into the detail. To find the carotid pulse, you start at the sternal notch and you put a finger on the sternal notch and then you put another finger on the, on the mastoid process and midway between the two is the, is the strap muscle, the sternocleidomastoid. If you put your fingers underneath that, then normally you would find a pulse and you can try that on yourself. In this case, you're feeling for the absence of a pulse. I'd advise you to use your fingers because actually you have a pulse at the end of your thumb that you may feel and confuse it with, with, with the person's pulse that really shouldn't be there. Listening to the heart sounds, I would lift, list on, on the left hand side, listen on the left hand side of the sternum. I put your stethoscope there, and you're listening for the absence of heart and breath sounds. And you can do those both at the same time. Don't worry about positioning the stethoscope in different positions because you're not doing a full physical examination. If breath sounds are absent in one part of the chest, they'll be absent in, in all parts of the chest. And likewise, all the areas that you might listen to heart sounds as well. Do just check that if there is a bed with an electric motor that it's been switched off because at some point or other, the, while you're trying to verify a death, the bed will inflate and you will hear noises coming through the chest and also the chest will begin to move up, which can be quite disconcerting when it, when it happens. Don't worry, the person's still dead, but the, but the bed is still active. For chest movement, you can, you can watch, and you're basically using the same technique as you've been ta taught for basic life support to, to establish that respiratory effort is, is absent. Fixed dilated pupils, you, op you do this by opening an eyelid. If there is good light uh, where you are, then just opening the eyelid should be enough to, to admit enough light to get, get a response if there is any. If not, then use a pen torch if you've got one or use the uh, light on your, on, your, uh, on your phone if you haven't got a pen torch. The pupil will be large and won't, won't move and become smaller as you shine light into it. Uh, there is no need to do a gag reflex and also no legal need to do a corneal reflex either. You can do both of those things, but they don't look too good. And also there's no legal requirement to do so. Once you've, once you've finished the, the final parts of the practical examination, you move on to, to the paperwork. You complete the locally agreed form. In Wolverhampton, we have the GP notification of registered nurse verification of an expected adult death. But you will have, probably have a local form where, wherever you work. But at the very least, you should put who the person is with some form of identification, such as date of birth and an NHS number who you are and what your grade is and what you did to verify that that person uh, is dead. You may have a local pre-filled pre form. We, we have an electronic version that can be uploaded to our, our computer system. What happens afterwards? Once the body is verified and there are no obvious immediate suspicious circumstances, the body can then be taken to an undertaker. It is good practice to inform the family and the undertakers of any infectious diseases that may affect storage of the body later. 
things like C. diff, currently coronavirus, and one or two other things. It is good practice to inform uh, of the presence of pacemakers and ICDs because these will need to be removed before cremation as they do con uh, contain radioactivity which can be spread over the local area if the pacemaker isn't removed. Just on a personal plea, please do not promise the family that the death certificate will be available in a certain amount of time because it needs to be filled in by a doctor who has seen the person in life and also a large number of deaths actually have to be discussed with the coroner which introduces a delay even if there, there is no inquest afterwards. As background to this, uh, the, I would suggest the following reading. Confirmation of verification of death by registered nurses which is on the RCN web website. In other words, professionally there is a lot of background for this and, and you're not breaking new ground or going out on a limb. Thank you.